Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. I have another Monday quarterback video for you. I'm going to play this video and talk about things that are going on to better explain what's going on and talk about things that I think that are being done right and or done wrong. Here we go. We know that we can skip this part. It's just an informational telling you that don't draw any conclusions, blah, blah, blah. They just list the law. And mere discretion is advised. I like how they start completely zoomed out on Google Earth there. <laughs> So I like, I like the overall uh, view, showing exactly where everything's at. So we're on a regular traffic stop here. As I, as I noted in the previous video, this uh, little bracket thing that you see, this must be some type of um, custom layer or custom special effect, uh, if you can even call it that. That they've added to the video because this is not something that is native to the axon body series of cameras that you can just do an overlay of um it doesn't have a you can't put in the people's name um or a little battery symbol or a little tape thing like that it, it's just all you see with the axon body camera is the date and time up here the course it being axon body two or three and then the serial number and the um, axon logo this other stuff I don't know I don't know why they felt the need to add this uh, I think I think as I noted with the scrolling text at the beginning of the video and then this shit it's like someone's stuck in the 1990s so regular traffic stop on the car. You got your license on you? Alright, let's back this up. Yeah, that's not the greatest place to be uh, stopping. Um, I don't know why. If they want to go conduct a traffic stop on this vehicle, this vehicle pulled into this spot right there, why they decided or why she decided to pull in so deep like this and then be having her car directly behind the suspect's vehicle like this. All this dude has to do is throw this damn thing in reverse and smash the shit out of her right now. So this is piss poor positioning in my opinion. Hello? Good, pulling over because of the tits on the car. You got your license on you? Okay. Yeah, and so where she's sitting at, she's having to look at the screen, which means the back of her head is facing towards the suspect's vehicle. Horrible, horrible, horrible positioning. Ideally, the front of the squad car needs to be pointed towards the rear of the suspect vehicle that way as you're face first into this computer you can at least have some peripheral view of the vehicle in front of you and if there's movement someone getting out of the vehicle you can kind of detect that um, out of your peripheral right now her peripheral cannot include the suspect vehicle due to her positioning her peripheral, while she's looking at this screen, likely only extends to the A pillar right here. That suspect's vehicle is completely out of it, so she's ask she's asking to die, in my opinion.
Mr. Bell, your your registration has been suspended since uh, uh, February for an insurance lapse. Uh, did you have some sort of yeah. lapse, or did you switch insurance or anything? I'll switch insurance. I'm okay. Yeah, your reg is suspended right now. It's not, it's not really a big deal. Uh, we're just gonna get you, well, yeah, gonna have you step out, and then we'll work with you and go from there. Okay. You guys just come down here and chill? Yeah. Okay, alright, no big deal. I'm on crutches too. You're on what? I'm on crutches. Like I'm oh shit. <laughs> Is it your leg? Yeah, I got shot two weeks ago. You got shot two weeks ago? Oh, in 2012? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, I'll just have you step out slowly then, I guess. Are you able. Take your time. Take your time. Yeah, it's not. Knew that was fucking coming. Knew that was fucking coming. Fucking knew it. You were able. Yeah, it's not. Uh... Knew that was fucking coming. Knew that was fucking coming. Yeah, as soon as dude talking about, you know, he got some kind of injury, he can't get out. You know they're fucking full of shit. Like, motherfucker, how'd you get in that car to begin with? Knew that was fucking coming. Watch out, here. Sorry. <laughs> You roll the window down. So this is a good opportunity to start engaging people, start talking to them. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, drill them, drilling them or anything. It'd just be useless banter, getting them talking, trying to get a better feel for um, what their temperament may be. Just simple conversation. And you can tell right off the bat, someone's got nervous behavior, if they're going to avoid eye, eye contact, they appear to be deceitful, etc., then you can kind of go into some more, um, I guess you could say, more detailed questions like, what do you guys do down here? Or, um, is there anything in the vehicle you need to be aware about? Um, just, it's a fishing expedition is what these traffic stops are, so why aren't you fishing? And the other thing that that banter does, whether you're drilling them for serious questions or you're just fucking shooting the shit, it keeps their mind occupied on having to respond to the questions being presented to them. Um, and especially if you start asking questions about what's going on and everything like that, now they might be formulating in their head a lie. And so now they have to think a little bit harder. Um... All this thinking in response to you talking keeps their mind occupied and prevents them from coming up with a really good detailed plan on what they want to do. It keeps screwing with their thoughts. Do you guys live far? No. no? Okay. 
I'm just gonna have you wait until he gets out, okay? Take your time, take your time stepping out. So I'm actually, honestly, really surprised that this being in the New York area, that they even allow these officers to pursue this vehicle just for a um, registration plate out of date. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I, I thought in that area, pursuits were like a no-no thing. Um, but that is the case with some agencies out there. Some agencies, if it's a small offense, they have policies. They just don't engage in pursuits. Um, but you can see here, this red line, they, I mean, they went a pretty good distance. And we'll back it up even a little bit more. Uh, so they obviously started somewhere right, I guess, right down in here. His little buddy jumps out the car here. Makes a big loop, goes all the way this way, starts shooting, back it up even more. I don't know what he does past this point, but yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a long track right there. So really surprised that an agency in New York got to do a pursuit. I mean, it's not exactly in New York, New York, but, um, or New York City, but it's, it's in New York. necessarily have a big problem with that um the passenger is able to fucking shoot out the window then, then so be it um it did not look like the suspect vehicle was super close to them it looked like it was a little bit of a delay. you can't see very well suspect vehicles right there um that's a pretty good long shot for a pistol i don't think that i would have recommended um shooting in that exact scenario because it's so far away but if it was a lot closer yeah i'd have no problem with this tactic of leaning out the window and shooting i think that's perfectly fine but i just don't think that in this scenario that vehicle being so far away that it was very fine because pistols are not very accurate uh, they got very short barrels, and you only have two points of contact on them. And in this kind of context, you're also in a moving vehicle that its elevation can be slightly um, adjusted abruptly by simply hitting a pothole. Or its windage can be very 
widely adjusted just by the simple moving of the steering wheel. Um, it's just not going to be one, you're taking something that's not very accurate and you're putting it on a platform that's not going to help at all. It's just going to make matters worse. So the further the target is, the more well, the more likely you're not going to hit shit at all. And they're in an urban environment and know your target and what is behind it. What's behind this vehicle? People and other vehicles. So I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze on this one right here. But if that suspect vehicle was a lot closer to them... Um, then yeah, no problem whatsoever. If it was just a few feet in front of the bumper, by all means, light that motherfucker up. Um, in a rural area, they're out on a country road somewhere. There is no houses nearby. It's just woods. There's no cars that you can see in front of you. And they're a little bit further away. Okay, maybe if you're wanting to shoot. But uh, then again, it's not likely you're going to hit shit with a pistol. She, uh, that malfunction that she had, um, she worked and cleared it. Um, we got to think, um, another thing to think about with the, you know, shooting out the window like that. If you drop that gun, <laughs> um, it's, it's gone. I mean, yeah, you're gonna have to go to your backup gun. I mean, you could stop, but then you're you're practically out of the out of the game at that point. You're out of the pursuit. Well, at least he's being safe with his seatbelt on. Any cars approaching us, he is firing head on. He is firing at any officer coming close. Bailey and Wilden. Dude, if you, if you get another chance to shoot him. communication between these guys um, and he's talking about you know getting reloaded so they had a gunfight right it's a moving gunfight 
He expended some rounds. They're still going. There's a lull in the fight. Driver's communicating to his passenger, reload. Get that gun topped off and ready for the next engagement. It's best to start a new engagement with a full magazine versus a partially depleted magazine. Fight. Fast. Fight, assess, scan, top off. Are you full? I got 16. Okay. But I top three rounds. North on Pine Ridge, still from Vera. Coming up to Genesee. Coming up to Genesee. No, is our car hips? It's not running right. Pine Ridge is Genesee, guys. Tell Chief DeWall to be careful. Tell Chief DeWall to be careful. They have shot at numerous officers. Pine Ridge is Genesee. I don't think that car can go very fast. Do we have a guy that's hit in there? I, I don't. Uh, they might have one that's hit. Westbound on Genesee. Passing her. We are going westbound on Genesee. Passing Crossman. Westbound on Genesee. Tell her not too far away from Bailey. Approaching Bailey. Shooting more rounds at officers. Just Bailey. Westbound. Westbound. Be very careful what we do here, okay? A lot of cars. I see a gun out, I'm fucking up. Yup. Just, just be smart. Everything's gotta be smart right now. Dude, I can't see their fucking hands, dude. I know, dude. I'm trying. Turn the volume up on the car radio. Can't get shit. Volume up. I'm still going westbound Genesee. Still westbound Genesee. Westbound on Genesee. Westbound on Genesee. Oh, fuck me. About to be an accident. About to be an accident. Okay, 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 okay. Tom is still, Tom is still shooting at us. Now approaching Fillmore. Still shooting. Again, Tom, they are still actively shooting. South on Fillmore. Shoot, he's shooting. Driver shooting at us. Driver still shooting. Driver is still shooting. Driver is still shooting. The shooting right now. The shooting right now. Still shooting. Approaching Sycamore. We're losing something here. Tell them, tell them our cars. I don't know. Our car is hit. Somebody get ahead of us. Broadway and Fillmore, southbound. Broadway and Fillmore, southbound. We'll, we'll, we'll go, go, but I don't. Something don't feel right. Driver, tell him to shoot, driver, shut Driver shot. shooting, driver shooting. Driver shooting. Approaching William, approaching William. Approaching William. Be careful, when well, they turn, be careful that passenger. West on William. West on William, West on William. 
I can't see. I thought I can't see out my window. I'm reloading. Reload, be careful because I don't know what's going to happen here. We see holes in the windshield, so I am suspecting that the driver um, has fired through his windshield at the suspect vehicle. Um, shooting through a windshield um, <clears throat> obviously can be done, but it does not always result in the greatest results. Um, windshield is a sandwich of glass, laminate glass. And when you line your sights up through that glass on the bullseye and you press trigger, that round, when it hits and it goes through, that material is going to cause that round to deflect. It's either going to go to the left, to the right, go up, go down. One of those is going to deflect in some way. If the target's at the front of the car touching the bumper, it'll be a slight noticeable deviation. As you move that target further away from the vehicle, that deviation becomes more noticeable drastically. And it's not too far from the front of the vehicle, 20 feet, that you'll notice that you ain't hitting shit. The key to shooting through the windshield and hitting targets is to try and put your rounds through the same hole. Once you already got a hole established, send more rounds through that hole and those rounds are not going to touch glass laminate glass. So if the vehicle is close up, damn near close to the bumper, sure, I could see shooting through the windshield as a may be an option. If it's not that close to the vehicle, I wouldn't recommend shooting multiple rounds through different points of the windshield because you're not hitting your target. It's going, to, it's going to go somewhere else. And in an urban environment like this, you don't know where the fuck those rounds are going. Now, if you're shooting rifle, and you pop a hole through there and you can push that rifle forward and get that muzzle through that hole and still be able to sight through the windshield absolutely send them <clears throat> another problem with shooting windshield while driving and even in a seated position but it's even more uh, amplified while driving is the particulate matter that's created when you pulverize that glass. Um, it's going to create glass dust. And inside a vehicle, when you shoot, that glass dust gets stormed up and thrown around just from the shooting of the gun. When you're driving, the shooting of the gun plus the wind coming through that fucking hole that you just created is going to cause that glass dust to swarm all around inside that vehicle. And that glass dust, it gets in your eye, it's like sand. It's going to fucking hurt. It's going to cause involuntary eye closure. And because it's glass dust, it's probably going to cause some damage. It's probably going to scratch your cornea. Um, 
that's one of the biggest things on why I don't, I wouldn't recommend shooting through windshield while driving is that possibility of that glass dust just getting thrown back into your eyes and then completely fucking you. Um, I would recommend as you're shooting, close one eye so that when you fire and you curate that hole or that second hole and glass dust gets in one eye, then that eye that is closed should be protected. And you can, as your other eye that get affected automatically shuts, you can open that protected eye and at least safely navigate your vehicle to the side of the road, get it slowed down, and take care of yourself. Um, otherwise, if both eyes become completely fucked and you can't, like you're trying to squint, you're trying to open those eyes, that's a, that's a bad time when you're doing high-speed pursuit to have your eyes fucked up like that. Um, you're going to have to just apply the brakes and, and hope that people behind you notice that you're slowing down and hope that your vehicle is, is lined up and straight into the road to where you're not veering off to the side and you're going to smash into a pole or a car or anything like that. So, shooting from inside the car through the windshield while it's moving can present some some problems I don't think the juice is always worth the squeeze on it uh, there's a there's been a few times where I've seen it done that I thought yeah that was acceptable one was um, I cannot remember the state it might have been Nebraska but I'm not a hundred percent sure uh, this state trooper guy he um, they were in pursuit of this truck um, I forget what happened but the, they were getting shot at so trooper gets his his rifle out props it up on the dashboard there, fires rounds through the uh, windshield as they're pursuing this vehicle all the way out in the middle of the country. And, uh, you know, that, I think, was kind of an acceptable move. Um, but some of these other ones, like, especially like shooting pistols through the windshield and you're hitting multiple places on the windshield and you're out in urban areas, I just don't think the juice is worth the squeeze. Now, if you're bumper to bumper on that vehicle, then yeah, you're going to have a more likelihood of hitting that target um, or putting rounds into the vehicle at least. You might not, you know, intentionally hit your person driving, but you're going to put enough rounds in that vehicle to where you might end up hitting them. Um, if it goes into a kind of a pit thing and your front end bumper is up against their driver's side door and they're getting a weapon out, then yeah, absolutely, by all means, start plugging around to that windshield at them, start putting fire on that person. But cases like this, pursuing the vehicle, it's a little bit distance away and trying to plug around to the windshield, it's just, it's just too risky for other people. I'm just slowing down, about 20 miles an hour. Well, that's funny. Watch out, guys. You will shoot.
round. Just stop it, just five more rounds. Still shooting. <laughs> All right, so they, um, they, they rammed that vehicle from behind. Air one, again looking for air one, system. I wanted, I wanted to What's that? I wanted it, we're done. Just stop it, just fire more rounds. Still shooting. And now their vehicle is out of commission, so they're, they're out of the fight. talk on that so <clears throat> suspect vehicles coming at them the suspects already shot at people um and they're shooting at this vehicle as it's coming that person you know even if they didn't shoot at this officer um did they shoot at this particular officer let me back it up yeah so um I don't know if they fired this officer or not, but let's say they didn't. Um, it's still perfectly acceptable, in my opinion, for this officer to be shooting at this person because they are a substantial risk to the public. They have shown that they have no dis, they have no regard for innocence, for regular people. Uh, obviously, even for the officers, they're shooting all over the place. So this is a perfectly acceptable use of deadly physical force to apprehend a person. Um, realistically, it's it's using um, deadly physical force to stop the threat, because they are an active threat. They're shooting at people, and they're driving very recklessly. They are a danger to everyone else. Um, they are in the midst of fleeing, and so, you know, you could say this was use of force to apprehend a person, but it's, they're a threat. They are an active threat to people. Uh, are you, are we Depending on, you couldn't see very well because of the jacket, so I don't know if they were shooting before that vehicle got to them, which if they were shooting in that manner, then guess what? Who's behind the suspect vehicle? Officers. <laughs> so if you're doing a crossfire like that, that's bad. If the vehicle is, is up super close and the angle is just right to where your rounds aren't going to be you know going past it to the officers then that's that's cool that's better um, now we still have houses on the other side here so that may not have been the greatest uh, you know thing to do personally what I think they could have done was just sacrifice their vehicle and park that son of a bitch right in the middle of the road um, that would have caused that person to have to slow down it become a choke point for them and then they could start uh, dealing with it um, yeah So I'm a, I'm a little okay with that angle. Mm -hmm. 
maybe not so much right there, but right there for sure, I think that angle would be good. They're not pointing towards officers or anything. This angle for sure is good. Um, <clears throat> but then, like I said, there's houses in the back. So if we can look right in here, we got a vehicle right there. I think they could have uh, parked their cruiser long ways right here. And he still could have gone through the yard or something like that. But um, I think they could have parked their cruiser long ways right there. He probably would have rammed it or something like that. Oh, well, so be it. That's acceptable. Um, just anything to slow him down or uh, stop him. So far, all I've seen is pistols. I don't know if they have rifles or shotguns in their vehicles. If they did, then this is certainly a point uh, where it would be great to get those out and get those in use. Okay. 
intersection uh, there's a bunch that were over here so they could have put more here to kind of help block it up and luckily this dude went this way instead of coming straight forward if he came straight forward and smacked into this vehicle like I said it would knock the fuck out of her um, it ends up veering off and going off over here so we have this officer and this officer that we can see for sure to her left and then there's an officer all the way the fuck over here as this gunfight is going on holy shit like what the fuck like why are you behind this suspect vehicle with other officers over here shooting like this is a bad 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 crossfire scenario right here super bad and he's still going into the backdrop there. Like, he's not even going the other direction. He's continuing to go into it. Like, he's fucking going, Leroy and Jenkins. <laughs> so she goes to the sidewalk. Pushing the bag in. And for whatever reason, he has... Empty mag, or maybe an, another mag. I don't know what's going on with this other mag right here. Uh, this is not going to be helping any. Uh, this is not helping to achieve a good two-handed grip on the gun. Might as well be shooting one-handed at this point. Empty magazines belong on the ground. So let's back this up. And I 
had a good freeze frame right there. I should have saved it, or I should have stayed with it, but... All right. She is putting the magazine in backwards. Yeah, that's not going to work, baby. Um, so, mag placement on the belt. Bullets towards the buckle. Bullets facing towards your buckle. That is the preferred way of doing it. That way, when you're reaching down to your magazine, you're getting it and you're bringing it up to the gun, it is it is going to be oriented in such a way that it's going, going to go in cor correctly. Uh, you face bullets the other directions, you go to pull that gun out, you're going to have to twist your wrist, do something kind of weird with it to get it going correctly. It's not a easy, simple flow of um, movement. So bullets towards the buckle. Um, I don't know how she had her magazines placed. I'm assuming she probably had them facing in the other direction. Um, and this is why you, you're seeing this under stress. I see so many, so many people out there uh, not having their mags in their pouch correctly. They have them facing the other direction. And that's, that's a telltale sign that they did not have a good instructor. Um, and it's a telltale sign that they have not done a whole lot of force on force where they had to do a reload with that setup or else they would have figured out real fucking quick hey this shit don't work um so you gotta have your magazines positioned on you correctly so she tries to put the magazine in backwards it don't work it doesn't work now it looked like her hands were free of that It looked like her hand was free of anything when she was working the gun. Um, <coughs> it could be an empty magazine. Uh, if it is, I don't know why she's holding it like that. She needs to get rid of it. It's possible that uh, since she had to do a reload in this gunfight, that she thought maybe she'll get her other magazine out and it will make for a quicker reload. Possibly, I, I, I don't know. If that is a full mag, then it's, it doesn't need to be there like that. It needs to be in his pouch. You need to be getting a good two-handed grip on that gun. So this is a telltale sign to me that um, she has not had good firearms training. Um, if she did have a good instructor, then she was in a class with multiple people. She fell through the cracks, didn't get noticed, and was passed along when she should not have been passed along. This is a piss-poor handling of a gun. Piss poor tactics, skill. It's just, it's like you, sh you should not be seeing this. Like this is, a, this is an example of what not to do. muzzle our partner here. Let's point the gun right in his fucking side. God damn. Amateur hour, man. Fuck. <laughs> While there's other people on the other side, too, like, these motherfuckers don't understand the concept of crossfire. Holy shit. <laughs> Get behind the car, get behind the car. Get out of the way! He's coming this way. Over here. 
someone to provide lethal cover um, and it could have been safer for the officers on either side of the vehicle to be able to holster up and go hands on this person. If he became a threat then the guy who is practically right fucking in front of him aiming through the windshield can just start lighting his ass up. We know this vehicle's not going anywhere. Likely it's not going anywhere. It's terminated into the pole. The wheel looks like it's fucking snapped off like it's it's probably not going anywhere. If it is, it's not going to be traveling like it norm, like it was earlier. It's going to be, it's going to be going like probably like diagonally across the the grass here, just dragging this this fucked up wheel or pushing this fucked up wheel through the grass. It's probably going to snap off the rest of the way. Um, so yeah, you know, planting right there on the hood and aiming straight through the windshield right down at them. That can be a viable option. Not all the time, but in some circumstances, it most certainly can. Where are they? Oh, go away! Yeah, just there. You have to pass your head
this dude, Johnson, holy shit, man. Like, he is behind everyone shooting. And then, of course, he's shooting towards where other officers are. Like, that's fucking nuts. Wow, man. Like, this dude, shit. He's lucky he didn't get fucking ventilated. And earlier, you know, choosing the bus stop as his area where he's going to take cover at. Yeah, not the greatest place to be hiding behind. Like, that damn car was smashed right fucking through that. And then he has this bright idea that he's going to go all the way into the backdrop of all the rounds going. Like, just fucking, oh my god. And then these two, knowing that everyone's over here shooting in this direction, and there's people over there in this intersection, decide to come over here and start shooting. Like, ugh. These guys would make great majors and colonels. Hell, even chiefs of police. see this whole group of fucking people and then you see some new people coming in and they're like swarming right in like they're going to be the one to go save save something you know like they're going to be the one who is making the difference in this whole sea of fucking cops <laughs> We're approaching Fillmore, approaching Fillmore. Speed is 20. Officers, be careful. Heads up out there. Heads up on Fillmore, heads up on Fillmore. He's approaching now. So I'm gonna I'm track this guy. So right here, this guy's got the blue. Get back! Get back! Get back! Get back! 
Yeah, that's there. the other one. All right, so back it up further. So over here, right there, right here, what the fuck, man? Like, what the hell is this shit about? So this guy who has blue on his stuff, it says Buffalo Police, so I'm, I have to assume that this one is going to be the same thing. So I don't know if that's like a different type of Buffalo Police. Because they their uniform does look different than the rest of them, so I don't know if like... I don't know shit about Buffalo, so I don't know if it's like a transit cop, or this is like a... Uh, a you know... There's like there's different kind of cops out there. You know, you got street cops they do patrol work, and then you got like transit cops who work like work on uh, subways and and stuff like that. And then you've got you know other types. So I don't know if this is a case of this these dudes in these blue sleeves being um, non patrol guys, and this is like a beef between regular patrol and these dudes. I don't know. The dude in the white just fucking shoved the shit out of him. So like, hmm, it's interesting. Radio, we need an ambulance to fill more ferry. Multiple gunshot wounds. Okay, just make it sure. Yeah. You all right, dude? Yeah. Okay. This dude's ready. Like, he's got the gun. He is prepared if there's any other threat. He switched on. He's still head on the swivel. So... So he's part of the SWAT team, obviously. Um, so this may be how uh, they are trained to do. While while his teammates are um, hands off their guns, going hands on suspect, doing uh, treatment or whatever, he is their guardian. He is the one who's watching their back and has gun ready to fight if the threat comes to his friends, his teammates who don't have their hands on guns. That's good. I like that. This dude is still in his fighting mindset. Um, and he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Now, this other stuff, man, like the fucking pushing of that cop, knocking him down, and then this dude, this Lieutenant Baker dude, just going to fuck off on people. And I mean, yeah, you like, there's no need for 30 cops to be surrounding this one dude once he's in cuffs. Um, but the way he went about it, I just don't think that was perfectly acceptable. Who's this? That? Is that yours? Mine. Okay, just make it sure. Yeah. You alright, dude? Yeah. Okay. 
Sure. Yeah. You alright, dude? Yeah. He's got a clip draw on this damn thing. <laughs> that janky ass shit. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like to be a Glock pistol. Um, you can see what is a clip draw on the side. It's just a, a, a piece that attaches to the um, back plate on the Glock. And this is just a clip so that you can stick the whole gun down into your front of your uh, pants. And this clip clips into your pants. I don't know what this is right here. This looks like it could be potentially a, a laser grip attachment, and that could be what we see right there, this darkened area. It's kind of hard to see in the picture very well. It could end up being on the other side, whatever this glossy thing is. I don't know. It's hard to tell. He's got his extended magazine with... I don't know what the hell this is. Ethica? G Thica? Ethica? Don't know what that is, but he's obviously done some um, artwork to his stuff. <laughs> mm. And this motherfucker survived. Ha <laughs> ha! Holy shit! He fucking lived. All those rounds shot at him. Like, his damn car looking like Swiss cheese, and this motherfucker lived. <laughs> wow. Uh, I really wish they would have talked about how many times he was actually shot. Um, and this is one reason why I always say that if you know you're going to a gunfight, bring a rifle. Because you're going to incapacitate the target a lot more effectively with a rifle than you are a pistol. There are all kinds of people who are still walking around today who've been shot with pistol. Not that many people walking around today who've been shot with a rifle. <laughs> That's a lot of people who just charge their gun. <laughs> We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen fucking officers shot their gun. Um Wow, that's uh, a lot of officers to be taken off duty and put on leave. Um yeah, that's, I bet they were hurting after that. <laughs> I bet the fucking watch commander was pissed. Motherfucker, you mean I've got to go out and work fucking calls? This is bullshit. <laughs> uh, damn it. So, yeah, this was an interesting incident. Uh, lots of crossfire going on. Uh, when he uh, terminated into this um, this sign here, um, some kind of interagency uh, fucking problem going on with the way he shoved that one officer out of the way and knocked him on his ass. Don't know what the hell is going on there, but that was kind of odd. Um, Yeah, I mean, there's not much else to say about this video other than lots of crossfire, um, no use of rifles. Like, I, I mean, they might not even have rifles in their cars. Uh, that's a possibility. If it is, then that's a sign of poor leadership, people being in leadership roles who do not need to be there. Patrol cars need patrol rifles. If it's the case of the cars did have rifles in them, but they all neglected to get them out, then that is a sign that that is poor training on their part because the officers are not thinking 
correctly. Um, if they're in a position where they can get a rifle out and put it in the play, then they need to be doing that. Um, choosing not to is is negligence, in my opinion. Um, it's just not it's not tactically sound to knowingly go into a gunfight with a pistol only. Like you know, this gunfight's coming towards you. It's going to be here. Why not have your rifle out? That's yeah. Um, I think that's it. All right. So if you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you have not already, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more Monday quarterback videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching.